start stream. Let's see if that works out. <clears throat> hey everybody, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Let's put the microphone a little bit closer. And yeah, first one to drop in, please let me know again if the sound is okay and if you can hear me loud and clear, that would be super awesome. Excuse me. Um, so um, yeah, my food delivery came a little bit late, so it's just arrived like two minutes ago and I had one slice of pizza. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, thanks. <laughs> so uh, let's share the stream. Let me just put that on there. Where is the link? As much as I like YouTube for streaming and so on. It's horrible compared to Twitch. Twitch has a lot more features for for streaming. So let's put that in there. Oops, where's our content alerts? Okay, we are live. Well, I'm still a little tired. I just came back yesterday night from Fotokina and had a full day of work, or have a full day of work behind me. And yeah, now I'm waiting here for my pizza to arrive. Uh, yeah, sorry, one second to open my Coke. How are you guys doing? What's up? Has anybody else been to... Hey! Hey to China! <laughs> uh, what have you guys been up for? Has anyone been to, to Photokina? Any questions about Photokina that I, I should address today? Let me know now or later or whatever. Hmm. Picture quality should be fine, yeah. If the sound is not good enough, let me know. And we gotta turn on some jazz music, I think. Hope it's not too loud, but let's try that. Ooh, you bought a mint SLR? Nice! That's one news we have to share. I met with Scary from Mint actually this weekend and it was super nice. Really, really nice guy. Yeah. Well, that's more like swing now, but okay. So, so let me w grab one slice of pizza and then we can start. <laughs> hmm. Hey Antje, um, so the Charlie Looks Back is kind of in the state that it's finished. I um, managed to have all the construction ready, but my damn um, 3D printer has a problem. And fixing the problem, I didn't have time yet. So um, I'm stuck at the producing part at the moment. As soon as that's done, I will put it online. I uh, hope to be having time this weekend to investigate a little bit into the problem and be able to finish it. Otherwise, the week is pretty booked with shootings and stuff like that, so don't know if I can manage to do a lot this week. I also have to produce some content for Polaroid. Is the music too loud or is it okay like that? So, so yeah, Photokina. How was it? What was it? Uh, and it, why did I go there? Um, I was like, that was actually my first um, Photokina. I had never been to one before. And um, yeah, it was kind of interesting to see. On the one hand, on the other hand, I was just overwhelmed. There were like so many people. And it was just like, phew, <laughs> damn. I, I mean, it's okay for me to be in crowded places, but that was just like, oh my god. And yeah. Um, so that was like what I was a little bit overwhelming, and there was so much stuff. But like, it's really hard to take it all in. Like, you need at least two or three days, I think, to to really take your time and look at the things and and watch it. What like find what you want and go through all the the different halls. This was like I think like five halls, and like most of them had or like or like. Two of them had like two floors, so like, and they were massive, uh, like, yeah, just crazily, crazy big. Oh, mm. the pizza is hot, Tabasco. Um, so yeah, 
um, I went there on Friday, which was already the third day of Photokina. On Tuesday they have the press releases, and then on on um, Wednesday and Thursday was, was already regular open. And on Friday morning I left from Vienna, just headed out to Cologne, to the the photo fair, to Photokina, and yeah, just went straight in. First thing I did was met up with Nico. Um, he was with the camera rescue team. So if you don't know Camera Rescue, these are guys, the, the Vikings from the up north, and they try to buy big quantities of old cameras, repair them and resell them to keep analog photography alive. And what they also did at the Photokina was they did interviews with a lot of pers uh, people there. And if you want to see these interviews, head over to Nico's channel or to their, um, their Facebook page. Uh, I will just drop a link to Nico's channel, give me a second. That's this one here. So, <clears throat> check out Nico's channel. Nico is a super nice guy. He's into large format photography, a lot of film photography. He's He knows a ton. He's like really good at that stuff. Uh, so head over to his channel, subscribe to him and give him a like. Um, nice guy and there will be a lot of videos coming up. He already has one out online, which is probably the most time critical one, which is from Kodak. With their actor chrome film and all the real, the stuff they're talking about really nice interview should watch it you have a little bit of background noise but they made the interviews at the photokina fair and it's super loud there so like they managed to to have really good audio for the environment they filmed the interview in and i think there will be another um channel not found oh come on you're kidding me oh my god sorry okay sorry for the bad link Give me a second, I delete mine. Suck. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Let me let me look it up. It's Nico's photography show. Can somebody post a link? Oh no, you can. Why does it give me that link if I want to like is there a share button? Oh my god, I'm so bad with this. Okay. So Okay, here is his Instagram, and let me see what brings us this here. And this one here. the camera rescue stuff <clears throat> so take a look at the channel um, subscribe and watch the, the the interviews they will be released over time really interesting stuff go there so Nico and I also were talking about future project projects but that's all in the future um, yeah the open uh, like the rescue camera guys were really nice they went there was a really big crew of uh, eight people I think including Nico and they were just like trying to buy all the analog cameras they could find uh, right next to them was Photo Impex. They also had like the Adox film and like some really cool stuff. And also sharing with them a booth was Cinesteel. And Cinesteel also had, uh, did some um, show off of their Monopath developer, which we will be having soon in the in, this, uh, in the show here, show in our YouTube channel. Um, and I kind of want to make that transition uh, from instant photography to film photography and show how easy it could be. Like with Monopath developing, you don't need a lot and you can develop your film at home. But it will be a series of like how to start out with analog film photography, and we will start with uh, building a camera or like building, looking into the camera, how it's made, which camera you buy. Then we will go into the process of like shooting your film, what to watch out for, what film you take, and then we will go into the development process. So it will take time, but that's a series I have in plan, and I'm currently working on the content. Next up, uh, yeah, so I was talking with Steven still and pretty probably gonna help me out a little bit so let's see how that works uh, then there was also um, Azimago and Azimago is the company that you maybe heard of ha that had the Kickstarter project of the lab box and I'm sure a few of you did fund the Kickstarter project like did some of you fund it let me know in the chat if you did and that mm -hmm, tell me if I choose and that Lab box is like delayed for 
over a year now, I think, something like that. I don't know the exact time, but it's really, really delayed. And I got a glimpse at the final product there. It looks like they are finished and gonna start shipping this year. Like, so people in Europe should get it before end of the year. I think states could take a little bit longer or something like that, they told me. But yeah, um, if you haven't heard about Labbox, just Google it. It's a, a, a photo developing tank for on, on the go. And you can run, like, put your chemistry on there. They also have a monobath developer. So it's kind of cool for on the run development. So I was talking with them too, and let's see if I can get to get my unit a little bit early so I can make a tutorial for it. Uh, but yeah. The final product looked pretty good, like the material was nice, uh, the fabrication looked pretty well made. Uh, I, I watched them demo the, the, the process like two or three times, it always worked, so there wasn't a problem. So let's see what happens with, with that box and let's see what we can do with it. The chat is so quiet, nobody's talking. Are you still there? Everybody's gone? Yeah. And... Yeah, what else was there? So there were a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of um, small Chinese manufacturers. Um, there was Shen Hao showing off their 4x5 cameras. They also had a few other things. Um, there was a ton of light companies showing off LED lights. Like crazy amounts of, of, of LED lights. Different versions from flex light to big lights to whatever. Um, then on the other hand, we had like these um, major brands, Canon, Nikon, Fuji and uh, Panasonic and Olympus. And they had like these huge stations with like models standing everywhere. And so I, I couldn't tell, like there was just mostly people standing around with big cameras shooting half, like not half naked girls, but like girls on stage. It was like mainly girls on stage, no guys and yeah. Thank you very much. I, 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 yeah, a beard is always making me look. Uh, so yeah, that was like one of the, the 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 things that like I was okay. That's what you do. Looks like. So and yeah, that was like kind of like the digital part was so massive. Like everything was so digital and and whoa, and even the the Instax stand was was just like digital oriented like they, they did not separate between analog and digital there it was just like excuse me it was just like instex film it doesn't matter if you shoot it digital or analog or as like but as soon as it's instex and yeah i tried to get a connection with fuji like some marketing connection or some some contact that i could reach out to and i talked to i think six different persons and none of them could help me get any any help in austria with fuji it was too bad so I guess uh, Fuji, I'm out of luck with help from Fuji and I'm out of luck with help from Polaroid Originals since they also don't reply to me. Well, that's life, I guess. So I have to be like, un... yeah, no, no. not get any support from these two companies that I feature like 99% of the time in my channel. But what, what, what the hell. Um, I also met up with Adam from the Double Film. If you have seen the interview I posted two weeks back. And it was super nice talking with him again. Like they're really good on the run for the um, for the new films they will release. And yeah, no, PO not not even replied once to an email for, from me. Like I'm really sad about that. But what shall, what shall I do? Um. So yeah, uh, yeah. Adam told me like all, <laughs> nearly all the films are sold out at the moment, so it's going really good with their films. If you want to order some, you can try to buy a double film, but I think he's sold out, so you should probably head to the Kono film site if you want to get some films before they're all gone. Um, they're working on getting new new um, film in, but take some time. Well, Polaroid and PO are different brands, so that's something different. Hey Nico, nice to see you, was just talking about you. Um, so, if you have any questions, Nico is already in the chat, you can ask him, he was also at the fair and he did all the interviews, he knows the insider stuff, I just know stuff from walking around. Um, yeah, so that was, was was a little disappointing to not get any contact with Fuji, like all the small brands were really easy to talk with, they were really helpful and they were super uh, interested in all the stuff. 
and yeah so that was was pretty pretty cool it was also interesting that like suddenly people recognized me like at photokina and like hey you're Marco from analog things it was like uh yes i am <laughs> do i know you it's like ah uh, yeah okay good you know me from my youtube channel that's nice uh so that's like that's what's interesting but yeah okay it's okay you like if you see me somewhere just come to me and say hello i, I don't mind it was just like that situation was a little confusing because it was like in the talk with nico and just walking pretty fast and then it was like just ripped out of that conversation that was a little strange but nothing happened so yeah that was at photokina i think um and then yeah then nico told me he met up with gary gary from mint camera and if you don't know mint i guess you're not watching my channel or you're not into polar photography but mint is that yeah. is that pretty pretty big company well no it's not a big company but it's the, the company that produces a lot of um stuff for polaroid originals like the lens kit and the flash and everything and they also produce the manual sx70 version the sl slr 670m or x now the new one they just released a new one which has a pc sync so you can compare that a little bit to the open sx70 project they are really close open sx70 is just something that's an open source project and you can't buy it fi finished Mint sells your finished product with the module and everything like nicely um, like furbished so you, you can trust that the camera works and if it doesn't they're really nice to help you out. But what they also did is they developed a new camera and Nico like told me that Gary was at his booth on Thursday I think and showed him the new RF and I was like so jealous that I didn't get one. And I was lucky enough to meet up with Gary on Saturday for a nice dinner and he's such a nice guy, he's super into everything, it was nice talking with him, he was there with his family, like sweet kid and his wife was also really nice and we walked around and took some pictures and I got something to test which is in this little bag here. Ooh, wait, let's do it like this. So that's gotta be in a future video and yeah, don't want to show too much yet but yeah. As far as it goes for now, I really like the product. Uh, it is well built, it is heavy, it is really, really a piece that I can recommend. And just a little quick uh, thing. Yes, I know it's expensive, I was already saying it's super expensive. But the thing is, they built that camera from scratch. Everything in that camera is built by them. The lens, the, um, the processing, the manual, the light, it has a rangefinder, like beautiful viewfinder, everything there. And the price tag is around, I think, 800 euros at the moment. And they also have like this project of film for free, for, for always, which is not like you don't get film, just like sent over when you need one. Uh, for every four pictures you take and you put online and it has a li little bit of social reach, um, you get a pack of film from them. So four pictures with some social reach gets you one pack of film for free again. Um, that's a really nice concept and uh, interesting marketing, I guess. It's how you can spread the name. But yeah, I like that idea. But compared to Fuji cameras, yes, the price is massively higher. It's like eight times higher than a Fuji camera at the moment, or like kind of eight times higher. But the problem is Fuji is selling their cameras under value. Why are they able to do that? Because with every camera they sell, they expect at least to be three or four packs of film coming in. So, and you have this calculation, you can always say like, okay, well, I sell my like camera for cheap, but like on the film market, I will get some money. And yeah. Uh, I think it's hand built, yeah. Cause like there's just a small company. They, they do everything in their their own. Like it's it's all screwed there. It has a little bit, like two, one little quirk is when it's closed, when you don't watch out too much, you could, probably mess it up but still pretty fine camera um, yeah so that was a really nice meeting with Gary and like that was on Saturday um, and yeah we just like cut it out I have I still have to order some insects film to test the camera actually I have like none white at home at the moment so I have to order that and then give the camera a good test so I will make the video release in two weeks and that we can have a, a better look at the camera and you can see what I uh, what my opinion is about the camera the final one not the, the first impression but first impression of that camera great tool and happy to to have it here for a test um, 
Yeah, that's the most connections I made so far, I think. And now to the overall of Photokina. Is it worth going there or not? It's hard to say. I, as an end consumer, if you're a lot into digital photography and you want to see one product, it could be maybe worth it. But the price of getting into Photokina is really hefty, like if you don't win a card. Um, if you really want to test a new camera and have it in your hands and see what it's able of doing and stuff like that, then I would more likely go to one of your trusted photo sellers, uh, like photo shops, and, and ask them if you can just rent the camera or like give if they give it to you for one day to test and like give you a lens just to see if that's what you you are able to buy or want to. Um, other than that, it was really good for making connections. As a private person, I think I wouldn't have been super happy going there because like, uh, yeah, it was a little bit too much stuff and uh, yeah, it, 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 it's a, a, a photo fair for making connections, let's say it like this. That was it privately, business-wise I would always recommend going there. But like in May is the next Photokina and I already know that a lot of companies won't be able to, to go there or like the smaller ones will not invest that much money because the time frame is so small between it. You have to uh, think about like Photokina before was every two years and now they have like just a nine month span between this one and the next one. So I think that will be a hard choice for, the, for companies to go there. Yeah, I think that wraps it up. So. Drop in the chat questions you have about Photokina or about the future, what we will do. I'm happy to answer and I just take a bite of my pizza. No questions? Ah, that's a, such a silent chat today. Ah. So, okay, if you have no questions, we will close the Photokina live stream. Um, I will just go offline for a second and start a new stream. Um, a Mint 670 review, yeah, we can do that, uh, no problem. I have one here, uh, land from a friend. Uh, we could actually make a comparison between the Open S670 and uh, the Mint camera. What's the difference between both of them? It would be kind of interesting to see, I think. Um, but at the end, they are both pretty similar. Just the Mint has some different benefits to to the Open 670 and the other way around. But yeah, I, I was talking with Gary about the Open 670 project and he, he likes the project and it's open source. So he can kind of <laughs> get ideas from it for, for his project. And he loved the, the stuff uh, Joaquin made with double exposure. So I think that's something they will look into to put into the next camera. And yeah, that will be interesting. Uh, in Austria, I think there's the Photo Adventure Fair. Um, I've been there once and like, I don't know, but I'm not the biggest fan of these fairs, to, to be honest. I would go there maybe to hold a workshop. So if somebody needs me to, to make a workshop about instant photography or large format photography, I would be willing to go there. But as a consumer, I'm not that much into fairs. I don't know. It's not, not the thing where I find my best informations, but it was interesting to get connections or talk with the per people in person. It's always good to have like, not just a, a, like a, a social media person you're writing with, that you know a face to it. Like Matt Nico there, like we were talking before, but now knowing him in person, I know that like he's a really cool guy. And like it looks like we come along pretty good and that we can do some projects in the future together. Oh, you haven't seen the OpenS670 project. It's uh, it's an amazing project. It's like the Mint camera, but it's uh, open source based. Um, so Joaquin uh, is making that, and you just watched the live stream from last week. We I changed over um, S670 to the OpenS670. It's like cool. It's two hour live stream. You can just watch go fast through it if you want to. But it would be actually a tutorial how to really change your camera. The only thing is you have to produce all the parts yourself. There is no source to buy the PCB or the module at the moment. You will have to. Figure it out yourself. I love the return of Ectochrome. I hope it comes in sheet film. I mean, there's still like, I think, Nico, uh, they said they have sheet film still in stock of Ectochrome, or was that like the, the, the what they were saying? I, I can't remember. But like, yeah, Ectochrome is a really beautiful film. Uh, it's kind of the type I would shoot. 
and or will shoot so I'm looking forward to have a few rolls of it in the camera and get them out on some shootings in the studio probably but uh, yeah roll film ectochrome is really beautiful okay so yeah 135 is the first patch then they maybe go to 120 and 4 by 5 is later okay great so that's what's what's up Yeah, well, they are just they, they are just like announcing it to ship. So yeah, it's, it's super early and everything just needs to be figured out and like. But the cool thing is like a major brand like Kodak is investing again in researching and producing film again, and that's something really beautiful to see. So film is not dying out. Um, even if Fuji says they are recovering all the films, and on the other hand, they are just closing down all film productions. Kodak is really investing into that analog part and uh, is is seeing good, really good numbers on sales. Uh, it will take like I think two more weeks to be shipped. Watch the interview with Nico show. Uh, they, they state how how the delivery times are for actor crow film. Okay, so guys, um, I'm gonna turn off the stream for one minute or two minutes, and then we're gonna be back up and we're gonna take a look at uh, at these babies here. Wait a second. One, two, three. One, two, three. Arrived two of them. These two arrived today in the mail, and this one I got like the day before I left. Ha, pizza. Ah. Uh, the, the Super 8 is also being revived, yeah. It's also on the plan. Okay, guys, see you in a second.